Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with asparagus, ham, and ricotta pizza. That's right, I'm gonna do what I call a white pizza. We've done these before, I think. This time we're doing an olive oil and ricotta spread as the sauce. The appearance was a little strange, but we'll talk about that later. But all in all, a delicious pizza, and here's how you do it. So we're gonna start with some ricotta cheese, just regular, not skim milk. All right, to that I'm gonna add some minced garlic and some extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna go ahead and add some red pepper flakes, a little pinch of salt, not too much, because we're gonna have some salty ham and cheese on there, some freshly ground black pepper, and then just a little splash of heavy cream. Of course, if you have some dry herbs or fresh herbs you wanna throw in there, go ahead. I was too hungry, to be quite honest. So I didn't put any in, but it certainly would be delicious. And we're gonna give that a mix, and if you want this to take a really long time and be super annoying, use a teaspoon. Otherwise, grab a whisk and you'll be done in like two seconds. So anyway, like 10 minutes later, mine was finally mixed and looking pretty good. All right, once our white pizza sauce is done, we're going to set that aside and get ready to build our pizza. All right, I'm using my famous thin crust, no need pizza dough recipe, which you certainly should check out if you haven't. It makes a great pizza. All right, and then I'm going to start spreading on the ricotta mixture. And like any pizza topping, restraint. You don't want a half inch of this stuff. Okay, you just want it covered. So this is plenty rich enough, we don't need a ton. So making homemade pizza is a great exercise for many reasons, but that it forces you to have restraint when it comes to pleasuring yourself with food is a big part of it. Once that was spread on nice and thin and evenly, I'm gonna to top it with some smoked ham. I just gave that a rough dice, more of a rough rectangle, but you get the idea. And again, not too much. I want a little bit in every bite, but don't overdo it. And then some asparagus. Asparagus and ham, beautiful combination. I really like asparagus on pizza, but don't put it on raw. What I did, I threw it in boiling salted water for literally one minute. All right, threw it right into ice water to stop the cooking, drained it thoroughly, and put it on the pizza. Okay, so that asparagus is not cooked through. It's still crisp, it's just not raw. If asparagus is really thin, you can put it on raw. I really like to blanch it first though. I think you get a better color, a better texture, better everything. All right, so our ham and asparagus is down. I'm gonna to top that with some sharp white cheddar and a little dusting of Parmesan. All right, we're gonna pop that in the oven. I always use the same method. If you don't know what that is, go to the blog post. I'll give you the link. But we always start on the bottom of the oven for five minutes. Then we transfer it to the top of the oven for another five. And there we go. 10 minutes later, I had a beautiful pizza. And by beautiful, I mean not that beautiful. It tasted amazing, but it looked kind of weird. I knew at that temperature, the olive oil and cheese would probably separate, but I thought it would be covered by the cheddar and the Parmesan. So anyway, live and learn, we'll figure it out. But it tasted really amazing. Smoky ham, beautiful fresh asparagus, the sharpness from the cheddar and the Parmesan, and then underneath it all, that beautiful olive oil ricotta base. Just a really nice pizza. And there you go, see? Look at the bottom of that pizza. Our bottom of the oven method is so awesome. You're gonna get pizza that looks like that. Pizza stones to me, totally overrated, totally unnecessary. You can get a beautiful crust with a pan. Anyway, appearances notwithstanding, I hope you give that a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.